With the Prusa MK4, a 3D printer has landed in my test laboratory that not only uses the term open, hard and software for marketing purposes, but puts them into practice in an exemplary manner. Of course, this is entirely in the spirit of how open is this gadget. Over the years, the classic design with the printhead on the XZ axis and the build plate on the Y axis has been consistently improved. The resulting MK4 is designed to be very easy to use and at the same time to deliver a high print quality. High quality components ensure a long service life for the printer. The Prusa MK4 is delivered well packaged with all parts sorted according to the assembly steps. As always, there are high resolution pictures of the package contents on my project pages. I choose the kit version of the MK4. Beginners should opt for the fully assembled printer, as a little experience in dealing with printer mechanics and tools is required in order to connect all the parts into a functioning device. The latest version of the build instructions in various languages can be downloaded from the manufacturer's website. This is extremely extensive and leaves no questions unanswered. It took me a whole day until I could turn on the printer for the first time. Both the X and Y axis are guided along 8mm round rods with linear ball bearings. The belt tension can be adjusted via screws which requires the included hex tool. These screws are somewhat hidden which makes things a bit fiddly. However, the belt tension can be adjusted very sensitively. The set axis is guided by 10mm round rods with drive motors and threaded rods at both ends of the X axis. The printer does not have any limit switches for the axis, the firmware determines the stop purely electronically via the stepper motor drivers, so nothing can wear out here. The maximum print volume is 25 by 21 by 22 cm and all axes run smoothly. The stepper motor drivers are soldered on the main board. On the microcontroller type ST32 runs the firmware developed by Bruiser, the source code of which is freely available. The power supply delivers an output voltage of 24 volts with a power of up to 240 watts. The direct extruder moves the filament via a planetary gear with a reduction of 10 to 1. The part cooling fan can be folded away for better access to the nozzle and is held in position by two magnets during operation. The entire hot end is attached via two knurl screws and can therefore be removed quickly. Printing is done on a magnetically adhesive, plastic coated steel plate. The heated print bed with a maximum temperature of 120 degrees Celsius reaches 100 degrees Celsius after about 7 minutes, with the temperature in my video studio being 20 degrees Celsius at the time of the measurement. After the printer is turned on for the first time, it performs the rise tests to verify the correct functioning of all components and to calibrate the device. The printer is now ready for use, it is not necessary to level the print bed before starting a job. To print, of course, filament must be inserted for which the corresponding menu item must be selected. And then the filament has to be inserted down to the gears of the extruder. The printer takes care of everything else. Print data can be transferred via VLAN, Ethernet or, as done here, via an USB stick. 
The standard operation is via the rotary switch, but the touch function of the 3.5 inch screen can be activated in the printer menu. The menu structure is well thought out and the operation is largely self explanatory. As usual, the first test consists of printing discs with a diameter of 50mm and a height of 0.2mm to check the quality of the print bed leveling. Leveling takes place directly before printing. The print head moves to different points in the area occupied by the objects to be printed and measures the height using an integrated force sensor. The height measurement is therefore taken directly at the tip of the nozzle. It couldn't be better. The force sensor is extremely sensitive so that the nozzle touches the surface very gently. The discs are printed at a speed of 30mm per second. The measurement of the print bed surface is obviously very precise. The 0.2mm discs are printed extremely flat on the print bed. The MK4 is very quiet in operation. The power supply and mainboard have no fans and therefore work inaudibly. The fan on the cold end can be hardly heard. All discs on the build plate stick well to the surface. The next test is the print of the mandatory Benji. Benji number 1 is printed at just 30mm per second to see what quality the MK4 delivers. As always, open your eyes and ears to get an own impression. Printing is completed after 65 minutes. Now the print speed and acceleration settings are increased to push the printer to its limits. The aim is not to produce the best possible benches, but rather to reveal a printer's weak points. Benji number 2 is printed at 60mm per second. and is finished after 40 minutes. Benji number 3 is printed at 90mm per second.
and is finished after 30 minutes. The last Benji in the series is printed at 120 mm per second. Only at this speed does the tip of the bow bend upwards a little due to not entirely optimal part cooling. Details about the test procedure and high resolution images of all printed benches from all possible angles can be found on the How Open Is This Gadget website. The 120mm per second benchy is finished after 27 minutes. The last test checks the material throughput. A single wall cylinder with a layer height of 0.4mm and an extrusion width of 0.7mm is printed at different speeds... until the limit is obviously exceeded at 90mm per second. These test results are also available on how open is this gadget in all details. The Prusa MK4 is an extremely user friendly 3D printer. Even beginners can use this device to produce high quality prints without much adjustment work. The support provided by Prusa guarantees that spare parts and firmware updates will be delivered for many years. If you are looking for a 3D printer that simply works, the MK4 is definitely a good choice. As always, there are many high resolution images of the device, the assembly and the prints made with it on the pages of How Open Is This Gadget. Have a click! Thanks for watching and I'll be back.